race to conquer space, the Americans last year spent $914,000 million. This year, the figure will be higher still. The sum spent on putting one astronaut into orbit would make the yearly budgets of many nations look like a child's piggy bank. Of course, Britain's official space programme is a much more modest affair. But we needn't feel ashamed. From a launching pad in Northwich in Cheshire, a British subject will soon be on his way to Mars via his spare bedroom. He's a research chemist, Mr C.A. Cross. Well, I suppose it was in about 1953 that I first realised that one could build a spaceship flight simulator. Now, this is a, a machine which enables you to fly a spaceship in space without uh, building one, without taking off at all, which, of course, is a lot uh, cheaper and easier than, than the real thing. But it does give you the full effects of flying in space. You say the full effects, but I mean, it can't produce things like weightlessness. No, not zero G, but everything that you can expect to see in, in space, you, you, will, you will see by means of this simulator. This is the working part of the spaceship flight simulator. It consists of uh, the drum at the bottom here, which produces the star images. It's got a screen of aluminium foil with holes punched in it uh, accurately in uh, each hole representing a star. And at the centre of the drum is uh, an ordinary uh, electric light bulb which shines through the stars and produces their images on a screen over here. Now, the next stage is the planet projector, this device here, which gives you a picture of the planet around which the spaceship is flying. And all the computation which uh, arranges that these images are correctly projected is carried out in the top deck, which is a mechanical computer. And on the very top here, we have uh, a chart which shows the position of the spaceship in relation to the planet at the centre of the chart. Now, all this equipment is operated from a control panel, but I think the best way is to uh, show you how it works. Well, we're now 150,000 miles away from Mars, travelling towards the planet at a speed of two miles a second. This means that we shall go straight past Mars in a hyperbolic orbit unless I do something about it. When I get on the far side of Mars, away from the Sun, I shall have to fire my retro rockets by a precisely calculated amount to put us into a circular orbit around Mars, which will be the successful termination of this journey to the planet Mars. That is, if I manage to make the correct calculations. Well, we're now rapidly coming to the point of closest approach to the planet Mars, and as we do so, I must fire my main rocket motors so as to slow the spaceship down and put it into an or orbit round the planet. Now, we're looking at the moment at the planet Mars. The spaceship is pointing in that direction and uh, I must turn it through 90 degrees so that the rocket motor will slow the vehicle down and put it into its new orbit. I must do this just as we pass into eclipse behind the planet, as the sun uh, is eclipsed by the limb of the planet. Looking out, I can see the planet Mars as a very narrow crescent with the sun moving up towards it from the left. And now I fire my torsion rockets and swing the spaceship round through 90 degrees so that I can fire the main rockets and slow it down. Swinging round. There. When you do come up here and sit for hours just looking at the stars, do you ever get the illusion that you really are in space? I never thought that I should, but uh, I do. Uh, th this is, I've been quite surprised at the uh, reality of the display and uh, uh, what happens. I, I have, in fact, been terrified I I when I was learning to fly that, uh, that first simulator. Uh, 
it was quite a, a shocking sort of experience to know that you're going along at thousands of miles an hour in space and you've got to take a decision as to what to do in a very limited amount of time and you just could not compute the correct action in the right time. And the fact that all that happened was that the simulator uh, went over its limits instead of you crashing your spaceship didn't make much difference. But you really did feel frightened? Yes, yes. Well, when you're sitting up here for hours, are you really learning anything? Oh yes, quite definitely. Uh, one finds out the technique of navigating these vessels in space. Uh, just when to fire the rockets and uh, what, what happens. Uh, the, the How long did it take you to learn to fly your spaceship? The first uh, version of this spaceship I took t 24 hours of actual flying time, which of course was spread out over a good many weeks. Right, well, once you've learned how to fly, does it stop being fun then? Uh, in that case, yes. This is why I built uh, the Mark II, which presents me with a much more complicated problem. Now, I've got a lot to learn about this one yet. Could you train a real astronaut with this equipment? I think you could. Uh, you would not choose to do so because, in fact, uh, in both the United States and in Russia, people have spent uh, many uh, thousands or even millions of dollars and rubles to build spaceship simulators which are much more complete and much more accurate than this one can hope to be. And those are, in fact, the machines on which the real astronauts are being trained now. Has anyone ever come along and asked to buy this idea off you? No, they haven't. Uh, there's been no offer to purchase the equipment. Has anyone tried to buy your services? Yes, indeed. That uh, happened in 1959 when I read a paper on the first version of this computer at the 10th International Astronautical Congress and uh, immediately afterwards I was uh, approached with uh, an offer of employment by uh, one of the American uh, space simulator firms. If you had a chance to go up in a real spaceship, would you go? Like a shot, yes. Well, if Mr. Cross had been born in America or in Russia instead of in Britain, he might well have been working at Cape Canaveral or somewhere in Siberia, a privileged expert in a priority job. But in Britain, he flies happily through space from a small spare bedroom of a smallish house in Cheshire. And that apparently is how he likes it. Good night.